Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at coding for the mean and standard deviation so we can answer questions from exercise 2F. Now it says the word coding, it's actually not that particularly interesting. All it is is just making large data values smaller so that we can work out the mean and the standard deviation a bit easier um, and then we can work our way backwards to work out the mean and the standard deviation of the original set of data. So it's just a little process of making the numbers easier, working with those easier numbers, and then getting back to our original data set. So um, this, the coding will affect the mean and the standard deviation of our values. Let's just have a, a look at this set of data here. Um, so we've got these people's heights. Uh, the mean is about 159 and the range is 27. Uh, let's have a think now. If all these values were multiplied by 2, what would happen to the measures above? Well, in this case here, the mean and the range would both double. Um, if you're doubling the smallest value and doubling the largest value, then their difference is going to get twice as far away. And, of course, the mean is going to get doubled as well. But let's think about something else now. If we added 20 to all of the data values above, then the mean, yeah, that's going to get 20 values bigger, but the range, that's not going to get bigger at all because the highest value is going to be 20 bigger, the lowest value is going to be 20 bigger as well, and the, negative, and the effects of that will cancel each other out for the range. So it would just be the mean that increases by 20, the range would stay the same. So this is something important that we've got to remember for decoding our data later on. If you change your set by adding or subtracting an amount, this will not affect the range or any other measure of spread, such as the interquartile range or the standard deviation. All other um, transformations will affect the mean and range um, or standard deviation, but not adding and subtracting. It will, the adding and subtracting will affect the mean as well. <clears throat> okay, so we have these, uh, these data values here for the number of temperatures at five uh, different nuclear reactors. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the coding of y, so these are, let's call these x pieces of data. We're going to do x, all these pieces of data, take away 300 and then divide by 10 to get some y values. And then we'll work out the mean and the standard deviation of those y values and then work our way back to the x values. So these are our questions. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the coded data and use your answer in part b to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the original data. So first of all, it would be a good idea to convert all of these um, data points using the coding. So we're going to subtract 300 from it and divide by 10. So these are the values that we get. And now we'll work out the mean, <coughs> or we won't work out the mean yet. We'll do the squared values first for the standard deviation later on. So the mean of the y values is the sum of all these y values divided by how many there are. So that's going to be 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So the value, the average of all of these data points here is 3. And for the standard deviation, pull out your standard deviation formula. And it's going to be the sum of all of the squared values uh, divided by how many there were. Take away the mean squared. And this is going to give us 1.72. So these y values here, on average, were spread out from the centre of 3 by 1.72. <clears throat> okay, now how do we convert back? So, the original mean, with the original data, we subtracted 300 and then divided by 10. So what we've got to do to reverse this is first multiply by 10 and then subtract and then add on 300. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to undo the coding and then it's going to be add 300 after that. So the mean of this set of data is 330. With the standard deviation it didn't affect the data if we subtracted 300 from all of our data values that was that's not going to affect the standard deviation. So we're just going to um, times it by 10 um, to get the standard deviation of the original set of data, which is 17.2. And that kind of makes sense, really, because if we take a center of 330, our data is approximately spread out by 17.2 degrees Celsius.
Okay, so do you see the difference between mean decoding and standard deviation decoding? With mean decoding, we had to add on the 300 at the end, but with the original standard deviation, we didn't do anything at the end. We just times it by 10, just like we did with the original mean. So the standard deviation only needs the, the multiplier effect um, decoded, whereas the mean needs the multiplier effect and the subtraction effect um, brought back in to decode the data. Okay. All right, and let's have a go at some more questions like this. So from the large data sets, we have the maximum gusts um, in Le Cars on May and June 2015. The data was coded using H equals G minus 5 divided by 10. And the following statistics were found. SHH equals 43.58. Now what SHH means, it's effectively the sum of all of the H values subtracted from the mean squared. Okay, so that's what SHH means. And then to work out the standard deviation, you would divide by N and square root. <clears throat> the mean of the H values was 2, and we have 61 data values from May and June. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the maximum gust in knots. So, what we've got here is the mean of the H values, so it shouldn't be too hard to work out the mean of the G values. All we've just got to do is undo this coding here, so we've got to times by 10 and then add on 5. We can think of this as rearranging a formula. So the mean in the gusts um, is going to be 25 knots. Okay. Okay, so 25 is the mean of knots um, for the maximum wind speed in May and June. The standard deviation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we need the standard deviation first, so pull out the formula. So it's going to be SHH divided by N or well, the sum of the differences um, of the h values squared. And then do 1 divided by the other, so we've got 61 here. And then calculate that and we get 0 0.845. <clears throat> so that's our standard deviation of the h values. Now let's work out the standard deviation of the g values. And remember when we're decoding standard deviation, all we need to do is decode the multiplier effect. So times through by 10, and we get the standard deviation of the G values is 8.45. So going back to the data, on average, the um, data was spread out by 8.45 knots from a center of um, 25 um, knots, okay, as the mean. Okay. Right then, so your turn to have a go at this question here. Remember, mean needs to be decoded fully. Standard deviation needs to just be decoded by the multiplier effect. Okay, pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, very good. Well done for having a go at this question here. So the weekly income I of 100 women workers is recorded. Um, you'd hope it would be the same as the male workers, but anyway, uh, the data was coded using y equals i minus 90 divided by 100, and the following summations were obtained. The sum of the y values was 131. The sum of the y squareds was 176.84. Estimate the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is apply or find the standard deviation of the y values, which is going to be the square root of the sum of the y squared values over n, subtract the mean squared. Okay, so let's work this out and substitute our values in. So it's 176.84 divided by 100 workers minus uh, the mean squared, that's going to be 131 divided by 10 squared. So, bear with me while I get my calculator out. So it's 100 
square root of 176.84 divided by 100. Whoops, I didn't do the 100 right in there. So, and then it's going to be subtract and in brackets uh, 1.31 squared and then square root our answer and we're going to get the standard deviation of 0 0.0226 Eight six nine dot 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 dot. So the standard deviation of the i values now is just going to be reversed or decoded by multiplying this by a hundred. So it's going to be twenty two point eight seven. We'll round that to. Okay, so there we are. The average spread of data of the hundred female workers in the workforce is twenty two point eight seven pounds. OK, then, thanks very much for having a go at these uh, questions here. Then have plenty of practice on exercise 2F. It's easy marks if you know how, so make sure you have lots of practice and you can do these questions blindfolded. Persevere through those difficult ones if you come across any and ask your teacher for help. Thanks very much for watching.